Hi, my name is Enda Murray. I'm the director of the Irish Film Festival. I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Kieran Cray, the director of Anne. Kieran, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Con- congratulations on a, on a very remarkable and, and fascinating film. It's it's been almost forty years since uh, the death of Anne Lovett, but this still uh, this event is still a very very sensitive subject. What inspired you to begin the the journey of making the film? Well, I suppose there was a, a number of articles came out in the Irish Times in twenty eighteen, and um, I, I always found them very different. Normally, when articles are written about in a historic events, it's very very broad, very macro pictures taken. This kind of went down to the micro level of, of what happened and what happened on the day, and that kind of was really fascinating. Fascinated me, like you know, just to. Cause, I mean, I mean, I knew the story. Uh, I grew up with the story. Uh, like you know, it's, it's part of Irish history at this stage, in a big way. And when I just read the article, we kind of it hit something inside. Just thinking about what if this fifteen-year-old girl went through on that day. That's what really inspired me. I want to write, make this film. I want to make it so you're with her. So it's all about Anne. And obviously, when I was younger, um, uh, I would have been a teenager when the actual incident happened. Um, and of course, as a teenager, it was shocking, but you kind of moved on because you were young and whatever. And so it's sometimes it's great to come back when you're older to revisit a topic. And, and I really, it's just something that I just felt so strongly about it that I had to just do it. And uh, it was a it was a film, probably my easiest film I ever wrote. I mean, I wrote it, I wrote treatment in, in maybe a week, wrote the script in a couple of weeks, and it changed very little from the first draft to to the shooting script. So, um, so it was a great experience for me. And obviously, when when something changes so little, you know that it's you're 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 satisfied yourself in the way that you want to write it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. We have a, a couple of films at the at the festival which deal with the legacy of the Catholic Church in Ireland, and and particularly um, Catholic Church um, that that played out in small town rural rural Ireland. Um, we have a film, Pray for Our Sinners, which is set in in Navan. Now, the events that took place forty years ago happened in a small town, Granard in in County Longford, but you decided not to make. The film actually in Granard. What can you tell us about why, why you made that decision? Yeah, uh, for me, I, I thought it would be a bit disrespectful uh, to consider shooting in Granard because obviously there's so much history to the to the event, and like you know, the, the, the Granard has never really commented or got involved in speculation or anything in relation to the story of that, um, and also. Granard as a city, as a town, wouldn't have worked for me because the way I set up the film, it was kind of like an inner circle and an outer circle. So where where Anne walked, kind of trying to hidden on inside paths, inside laneways, whereas the town worked on the outside of it. And I, we shot it in Boyle and Roscommon, and I knew Boyle very well. I I spent a lot of my youth in Boyle, and um, so I knew like the back of my hand, I knew it would work for me. And I had that structure of the an inner circle of inner lanes where she could be hiding to the outer circle where the the, the rest of the people in the town folks were would have been like you know so it was kind of for two reasons but i mean even if if granard had worked from a film perspective i still wouldn't have shot there i just i just don't think it would have been right okay that's um it's very interesting um you mentioned about the the the, the article that you read had been written in micro detail and in a way that's what struck me about the film that it, it was in micro detail what what kind of tone were you looking for uh, in in the film, and how did you work to achieve that? Well, I suppose it was kind of there's a number of different tones going on in the way. I mean, like you know, because obviously it's a very sad what happened, uh, and you wanted to capture that, but you didn't want to be glib or smart about it. Um, but I also wanted to show the banality of, of, of small town life. I mean, like you know, people going around their business, going to the shop, buying the paper, just going along. Just a normal day, but in the background, this horrific event was occurring, and and so I wanted to try and capture that. Um, so I, I I was all in my mind. I'm not going to call it a one shot film, but I mean we we I think it was 19 scenes, and we did uh, 87 setups, of which 71 went to the film. 
which is basically every time I move the camera to set up. So there's only 71 cuts in the whole film, which is an hour and 40 minutes long, which is very, very small compared to any, any other film. Like, you know, so by, for me, I wanted to have these long scenes where the camera stayed with Anne, stayed with the townsfolk, to drag them into this whole, so the banality of, 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 of country living, like, you know, as, as compared to what was going on in the background. So, yeah, I noticed that. I was going to ask you about that, the um, uh, way that the, the, the camera kind of is passed from one person to another in, in a way that pe- the, the story is passed from one person to another. So the, uh, the, the camera was, was moving all the time. So that was something that you, um, uh, you know, consciously uh, worked on, how the, uh, the, the, the camera would, would move along rather than being on sticks on, on, on place. I mean, it was only on sticks once in the whole film. The rest of the time, it was on Dave Brennan, the, the DP's shoulder, and um, I like because we wanted that closeness, getting close to the person it was fun to get that the feeling. Obviously, kind of it's kind of slow when the whole film starts. It's kind of building and building very slowly, and then once the event happens, it's kind of just a, a rush of activity, like you know, um, um, for the second half. Um, and I think the only way to achieve that feeling is to get it handheld, get in the person's face. See, to see, um, to see their face, to see the expressions of what's going on, like you know, because it's, it, it, it's, you know, I mean, a face tells a thousand stories, and yeah, um, and in that case, I think, I mean, like the, the first, the first word of dialogue spoken is twelve and a half minutes into the film, like you know, so we just give that call, that space, that peacefulness, to, just to pull the audience in to go to draw with the person on the journeys. Yeah, I I noted. I was reading an article in the Irish Times about um, something that uh, the article mentioned about respecting Anne's memory to the extent that some of the actors made what they call pilgrimages to the grotto where Anne died. Just I, I was um, taken by by that kind of respect that you had for 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 her and and for her I suppose her her experience and her 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 bravery in that. Do you want to just say a little bit about the that um, you know how the, uh, the 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 actors were um, kind of um, respecting her her memory? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, we were from day one. Uh, that was a tone that was set within the crew and within the, the, the whole project. Like you know that I mean, this was a for Anne and about Anne. We had to ensure that we respect and respect her memory, like you know, and like so. The actors, I mean, some of the actors, I know, visited the grotto before, before they shot the film. Before they shot the film, and like during the film, one of the people was was an opera singer, would you believe? And and they they had a little session and they sang some laments for for uh, like where some of the, some of the crew and the cast went to it, like you know. So, I mean, there was huge respect, um, um, because I mean, it is a very sensitive subject. And I mean, like, you know, there's a, such an onus on you to ensure that you get it right. Um, yeah. I think we, well, everybody felt that. And, and that's why, that was in a way, it kind of informed them of how they should feel about working in this film and that they had to remember Anne and, and do things for her, like, you know. Yeah. My next question kind of follows on from that, which is that, you know, it's almost 40 years since this happened, but it, it's still a very sensitive topic, and and as a writer, how do you balance the 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 consideration for you know the upset that it's going to bring up the memories for the family and the community with the 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 the, um, the need to tell this story to a wider audience? Um, yeah, well, I, what I'd say, I mean, like you know, um, there's been no negative publicity. I mean, literally, there has been none. And I think it's because I feel we really got it right that we were so sensitive to uh, what you went through. I mean, I mean, the town has never got involved in any speculation. The family has never interacted with anybody. So, I mean, I mean we reached out to them and, and, and we got no response. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's I, I think, I mean, others... When I was going through the whole development process, it took a number of years to get this off the ground, and whatever, and it's very difficult to fund. Um, but others were talking about maybe you should do a f- kind of a period of time before the event and a period of time after the event. And I was saying to who done it, and I had no interest in that because the one abiding rule we had was 
we're doing this to respect Dan. And if it didn't respect him, you shouldn't do it. And that's what we did. Like, you know, and I think that's once we stuck by that rule in our own minds, um, um, we, we, we kind of stayed in straight and narrow and we got a, a good result and we did show it the way, as far as I'm concerned, the way it should have been shown. Very, very good. How, how, how uh, where, where, has, the, has the film been screened in uh, Ireland? And, and if so, how, what, what has the response been? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, been, it's, kind of, it's been around a bit, all right. We got into a number of really good festivals around the world, like, you know, Talents Like Night in Estonia, um, Cairo, Goa in India, and a number of other festivals in, in Europe and um, America. We got a cinema release. We did an independent cinema release here in Ireland in April this year. Um, we got out to 12 cinemas, which maybe doesn't sound a huge amount, but we've 90 cinemas in Ireland. So that's like 14% we got in. And like, we had no budget like, you know, for publicity or answer, like, you know, we, we did quite well. We, we, we Some cinemas stayed, some, some cinemas for over six weeks. Like, you know, so, and like, in in Longford, which is always the nearest cinema to, to Granard, and uh, like, there was queues in the first week to go and see it. Um, so I think, and like, obviously we got a huge amount of press around it. Um, and uh, I think the overall tone is that we did it right, which is, which is it is a relief to me, but I always knew it would be because I mean, that we set out with the right, the right view of what I want to do with it. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Sarah Devlin has won many plaudits for her performance. What's uh, what's she doing at the moment? Yeah, uh, Sarah's. In, um, she's in a Sean and Casey play. I think it's going to be on. It started in the north in Belfast. It's coming to the Abbey. And then it's going to America. I don't know if it's not going to Australia. I'm not sure about Australia, but it's definitely going to America. Um, and uh, like she does an awful lot of theatre work. Like, you know, so since we filmed that, she's done a good few theatre shows. And she's done a film with uh, Killian Murphy recently enough as well. Like, you know, so, and Eileen Walsh was also in, in that one too. But like Zara was a fantastic actress. And we're looking, blessed with all the actors. I mean, like, you know, and, I mean, Eileen Walsh is just amazing. That's the mother. And Ian Beachy, the father, like, you know, they're really, they're first-class actors, like, you know, and it's great when you get an opportunity to work with actors such as these to interpret the words and to really put the, the face on it. And, because, um, I mean, obviously, we filmed this during COVID, which is obviously was another layer of hassle. Um, but then we should be, but we shot the film in 12 days, you know, two six-day weeks. So we were pretty quick, you know, like, yeah. you know, with a limited budget, we could only kind of get that, like, you know, and, um, but yeah, but yeah, as I said, I mean, like, Jared, we're just blessed with them all, you know. Yeah, and you, you mentioned earlier that you're in Donegal at the moment and you're about to embark on another project. Yeah, yeah, we're here now. The first day of shooting is tomorrow. Um, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day here. Overcast, but beautiful, right by the sea, top of the country, Malahead, like, you know, so that's called Cry from the Sea. And um, so that's a, it's a Canadian-Irish co-production. So, like, Dominic Cooper's in it and Sarah Gavin and Aidan Quinn, who everyone remembers as uh, from Michael Collins. So, I mean, it's a good yeah. cast and it's a big production, like, you know, so it's, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just wrote it, I'm not directing it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's going great and it's great to be back at it again, you know, because yeah. I, all you really want to do is make a film. Right. And if I was just to ask, what do you, what do you, what would you like people, audiences to, to take away from, from the film? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you know, obviously I've been, I've seen this a lot with audiences and I mean, like, you know, obviously there's, um, they do get upset, um, I suppose, like, you know, because of the topic and, um, and like, it's, it's funny, the demographic, I mean, we have kind of slightly older and slightly younger because the younger people who wouldn't have known about this incident, like, you know, and, uh, and amazed, like just teenagers that go to it and they're, they're baffled that something like this could happen. Because uh, uh, it's only forty years ago, you said it's not that long. And um, but I mean, I think, I mean, I suppose in a way, what I found is from other audiences is it's a talking point and it stays with them. You don't leave the cinema, and I know it's a great film. And what we do now it kind of stays with them. The weeks later, two weeks later, it still pops into their heads. So I think, in a way. This is one of these topics that uh, probably haven't been tackled um, in, in, in a large way. 
within the country. And yes, sorry, is you said it it had not been tackled. Hadn't been tackled. And like, you know, I think a lot of stuff has been tackled, but this hasn't and you know, when something goes wrong in a country or it's a big incident, like, you know, you know, you have to kind of um you have to um talk about it and, and get a, a dialogue going. And I think yes. this has a dialogue going uh, on this matter and hopefully I mean if I've in some way contributed to that I'm I'm delighted yes. you know, so fantastic. Yes. I think, you know, you mentioned earlier that it was a, um, a, an era-defining moment. Um, you know, it, it was three months after the, f- the first abortion referendum on, uh, in Ireland, and, and I suppose in uh, how things have developed in Ireland in, in terms of um, treatment of women and, um, you, you know, marriage equality, that this was one of the, 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 the those era-defining moments. I, I do recall myself, I, I actually left Ireland the following year in 1985, but certainly, uh, you know, it was a, 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 yeah, a, a, an event that, that had an impact on, on me. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like in the, I mean, like in the, this is what Rita said. It hadn't been tackled because whenever something came up, say about abortion or women's rights or whatever, the story of Anne Lovett always appeared, and like you know, but it never really went any further than that because it was such a shocking incident. Like you know, and that something like that could happen in the in nineteen eighties. We it was modern enough, like you know, it wasn't like the eighteenth century. Like you know, it's we did a lot of people's lifetimes, and um, and I think I think that's. What it was like, you know, it's 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 it, it was such a bad event, and, and it just kept coming up, and nobody was willing to, to do it. And like I, when I came to this, I I was doing my research, like you know, and I was amazed how could nobody have actually done a film on this because it is such an important topic. I just found it very hard to understand, like you yeah. know, and so I mean, I mean, maybe maybe people tried, and there wasn't the will or there wasn't the finance because obviously we were. We were turned down for finance and whatever, like you know. So we did a lot of uh, fundraising ourselves, and like RT uh, were very good to us. Um, um, but the normal routes didn't open the doors to us, and like yeah. you know, and and even though they should have, but I mean, you know yourself, there's so little resources and there's so much demand. It's it's very hard to work your way through that whole yeah uh, mire of the funding of the film, like you know. So. Um, but it's it's done now, and I mean, hopefully it'll it'll it'll, it'll yeah it'll last and it'll achieve something. I mean, it will be on RTE, and I'm sure probably maybe next year. So um, I'm sure that will be a big um, talking point. Thanks, th- th- thanks, Karen. Um, I I really um, I thought it was a very interesting, r- remarkable film, and and it it did um, I think honor and love its um experience and um and, and i thought you did um you know you, you you did her proud thanks very much for our film and thanks very much for um talking with us today so thank you bye-bye